InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's Tuesday, October 16th. Here's what we have in store. Tonight, the CIA is arming Al-Qaeda in Syria as thousands of what the New York Times calls hardline Islamic jihadists invade. Then, holy sh**, there is a staggering amount of feces in our food. Plus, the nanny state goes into overdrive as an elementary school interrogates and suspends a student for drinking tea. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, starting right after tonight's newscast is a second of three presidential debates. And if you've ever wondered why there's never any real discussion of issues, it's because it's a managed and staged performance. Mark Halpern of Time Magazine obtained a 21-page memorandum of understanding between Romney and, Ken and Obama. And listen to some of the stuff that they're agreed to. They aren't permitted to ask each other questions. They're not permitted to propose pledges to each other or walk outside a pre-designated area. There's no follow-up questions allowed from the audience, which, by the way, is supposed to be undecided people. Uh, we'll see. I don't really understand how people could be undecided at this stage. No TV cutaways to get a candidate's reaction. So basically what you're seeing is a very carefully controlled reality TV program, which explains why a North Carolina polling organization booted out Gary Johnson and actually put in, you guessed it, Honey Boo Boo. Yes, uh, presidential, pref uh, presidential poll in North Carolina conducted by an organization named Public Policy Polling excluded Gary Johnson, but asked uh, out, of 20, out of 12 questions, one of the questions was, how do they feel about Honey Boo Boo? Well, Gary Johnson is being excluded from the uh, poll questions because he has to poll, according to rules, again, that Obama and Romney have agreed to, he has to poll 15% in order to be included in the debates. That's about three times what Ross Perot needed to get in. And if you've seen our reports on Nightly News, we've uh, also talked to Gary Johnson. Uh, Alex has talked to Gary Johnson about a lawsuit that he has going, saying that uh, the Presidential Commission, which is a private organization, should not be allowed to determine the terms of debate in our presidential elections. According to the Constitution, anyone who's on the ballot in enough states to win really should be included in these uh, processes. And it's difficult enough to get on with ballot access rules. But certainly, we would like to have a real discussion of real issues. And that's just not going to happen in the control circumstances we have with Obama and Romney. Well, besides the crap that they're feeding us in the presidential debates, we are being given a staggering amount of feces in our food. A recent Bloomberg article entitled Asian Seafood Raised on Pig Feces Approved for U.S. Consumers explained that much of seafood that's imported in the United States from Asia is actually raised on pig feces. Now, a lot of people are grossed out by that, but there's, and there have been calls for a congressional investigation, but no calls to cut off food imports from Asia. Most people forget about all this in a few weeks and continue to eat what they are fed. That's for politics as well, I guess. And that, that brings us, I guess, to our quote. We ought to do this quote a little bit early. They use everything about the hog except the squeal. That's from Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. And I guess now we know what they're doing with the feces. Uh, if you care about what your family eats and you don't want to feed them that stuff, you might pack a lunch and you might put some healthy food in it. But we've seen over and over again that the nanny state doesn't like that. They want you to eat what they've determined you're going to eat, regardless of how unhealthy it is, or regardless of how healthy what you packed for your children is. The nanny state goes into overdrive. School interrogates and suspends a student for drinking kombucha tea. A police officer who responded reportedly told the child that kombucha, a mushroom tea that's been around for thousands of years and has numerous documented health benefits, was illegal and could be dangerous if the boy ingested it while taking medications. Well, this is an Asian tea that only contains about one half of a percent alcohol. And yet, they want the child to enroll into a youth alcoholics program. Uh, a bit ridiculous. Moving on to Syria, the New York Times reports weapons are going to Al-Qaeda in Syria. 
Most of the arms shipped at the behest of Saudi Arabia and Qatar to supply Syrian rebel groups fighting the government of Bashar al-Assad are going to hardline Islamic jihadists and not to the more secular opposition groups that the West wants to bolster, according to American officials and Mideastern diplomats. In other words, the CIA and the fanatical Wahhabists in Saudi Arabia and Qatar are supporting and arming al-Qaeda much the same way they did in Libya. Well, this is something you're not going to hear talked about tonight, even though the subject in the debate is foreign policy. They'll talk a lot about the phony issues uh, between each other, but the reality is, is that they have no disagreement on foreign policy. Uh, they try to make a, a distinction about how they would execute the foreign policy, but their policy is, they both have the same policy of continuous war for the military industrial complex to keep us focused on something other than what the banks are doing to us domestically. Today, domestically, oral arguments began in a landmark case between Americans for Safe Access and the DEA. In a petition filed back in 2002, the DEA was requested to reclassify marijuana. Currently, it's classified as a Schedule I drug, which means, according to the DEA, that marijuana is a drug with high potential for abuse and no currently accepted medical use and treatment. We know that that is a bold-faced lie. Everyone knows that marijuana has numerous medical benefits. And as a, and, and, and Americans for Safe Access put together a petition to the DEA to change the classification of marijuana. But the DEA summarily refused to look at the petition. And that was back in 2002. And the organization has been fighting ever since then to get DEA to examine the petition. But as we've seen with the EPA and other government agencies, uh, it's become very common for government agencies to just ignore their own rules for review and to just do whatever they want to do. They've become extremely imperious. And, and so this case is going to see if the courts will uphold the DEA's own rules. Well, tonight we've got a special treat for you from Joshua Owens, a top 10 finalist in the contests that were held this last summer. And he's done a great job of a music video, exposes the rise of the robots. Here's a quick look at the music video. Don't let them win you over. That's what they're hoping for. They want to shutter your mind and shackle it to the floor. It's not hard to figure out. The lies you're being told, there is a playbook, an agenda, a blueprint, a goal. So open your eyes wide enough to see you're the target they are aiming for. You're the enemy. Now in order to defeat them, to take back what is yours, you must expose what is evident, what is clearly coming forth. There is a good, there is a bad, there is a side you have that you don't underestimate what they are. Last weekend, there was a music festival here in Austin, Austin City Limits Festival, about 75,000 people a day for three days. And we had a little bit of an intra-office contest going where we handed out uh, new copies of the glossy uh, magazine that came out middle of this month. Here's a look at a couple of those on entries. And we'll be back right after this break. Hey everybody, this is Rob Dew for InfoWars.com. I'm out in front of the Giant ACL Music Festival since 2012. With hundreds of acts, there's going to be over 100,000 people coming here during the day. And I've got the new InfoWars Glossy Magazine that I'm going to be passing out for free to, until I'm out. I brought a wagon full, as you can see down here. So we're going to see what happens when uh, people get freedom for free. Hey guys, free magazine. Freedom Watch still free.
faces that are here in the festival? Can I turn off the camera? Nope. Okay. That's fine. I'll go get a police officer. Be right back. Okay. Are you selling water? No. But you can have one. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, cool. I have power. 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 It's time once again for our annual Money Bomb, our 48-hour broadcast to raise $1 million for our operation. But for our donators, we do have special gifts. With a donation of $365, you get the limited edition InfoWars Money Bomb t-shirt. With a donation of $500, you get not only the t-shirt, but also five DVDs. And with a donation of $1,000, you get the t-shirt, the DVDs, and the limited edition InfoWars Money Bomb Bullhorn, pre-recorded with a special message from Alex himself. Now be aware that your contributions do not have to be limited to donations. The InfoWars shop will be up and operating the full 48 hours. But the action isn't limited to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Stop by eBay for these great gifts, such as the InfoWars Sledgehammer, broken in and signed by Alex himself. Oh yeah, New World Order. Uh, the InfoWars coming for you. As well as these other great tools. And the granddaddy of all auction prizes, the Norman microphone that Alex has used in his broadcast daily for the past several years. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. And just in case they go out of style this November, we dug deep and pulled out the Obama Joker shirt. And as you can see, it bears the Alex Jones signature right there. The InfoWars Money Bomb launches this Thursday, October 18th, and runs for 48 hours. Click on the links at the bottom of the screen to navigate you where you need to go. I'm Jakari Jackson, and if you are watching this transmission, you are the resistance. Bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you gotta do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power, humanity has the power, we have the power. Do you wanna fight? You better believe you got one! Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories.
MoneyBomb.com. We just expanded next door. We're coming for the New World Order. Ah! Yeah, it's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. 48 hours to change the world. Here's freedom. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com to read our mission and to see the amazing roster of guests we've got lined up sharing their insights on liberty and resistance to tyranny. I got involved in radio and TV as well as filmmaking 17 years ago because I didn't like the direction I saw our country and our world going in. The attacks on basic freedoms like the Second Amendment, the move towards collectivism in the nanny state. And over the last decade and a half, Infowars.com and my radio show and the films have become really part of the core resistance to tyranny worldwide. It seems like yesterday, but it was more than five years ago that I was sitting in my small office of about 3,000 square feet and realized that we were already reaching millions of people a week and that we had a responsibility to expand our operations in the face of the globalist. It was listeners five years ago that demanded we have a money bomb and expand our operations. We've gone from less than 10 crew members to more than 50 today. Five years ago, I was reaching about 3 million people a week. Now it's 15 million a week conservatively. Imagine what will happen if you just tell one person a day about InfoWars.com or our news reports that are online. Imagine what will happen if you donate just 5 or $10 to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and allow us to go to the next level and put the nightly news out on free-to-air satellite worldwide. No, that one action won't save the world, but it will trigger brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere that will bring down the globalist and restore humanity on the right path of justice and liberty and a level playing field. We have a choice, the globalist dark age of control freak technocracy or 1776 worldwide. This October 18th and 19th, from Thursday morning right through into Saturday morning, it's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. 48 hours to change the world. I'll see you live with the free video and audio streams emanating from PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. I'm Alex Jones, defending liberty, resisting tyranny. Welcome back. We have some very disturbing news that is breaking right now of a man who's been vetted by both the TSA and the FBI. He has no criminal background, and yet he's been put on a no-fly list, perhaps because he's a prepper. Imagine that you're traveling abroad overseas, and your plane stops in a banana republic, and some armed guards come on the plane and take you off and tell you that you're not allowed to fly. You can't continue on your journey, and you can't go home because you're on a no-fly list. Well, the Banana Republic is the United States government, and the island is Hawaii. And that's exactly what happened to Wade Hicks, Jr. Uh, we've got in the studio here with us on Skype, we've got uh, Douglas Hagman, uh, who brought this story to us. And Douglas is uh, founder and director of the Northeast Intelligence Network, a 26-year veteran and private investigator who has worked for the Department of Justice, the FBI, the New York and Penn State police. He has written a book on tactical surveillance, and he's a CEO of a multi-state licensed private investigative agency. And Doug has uh, vetted this story. He's uh, talked to the man in question, and he contacted us because this sounds like another uh, Brandon Robb type story where there's apparently no reason at all for the person to have been detained. Like in the case of Brandon Robb, if you recall, he was uh, taken by authorities to a mental institution, and nobody could understand why, and he never got a good answer for that. Um, Douglas, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on? Yeah, the story came to our attention uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, and 34-year-old uh, uh, Wade Hicks, Jr., a United States citizen, uh, resident of Gulfport, Mississippi, eight months married, married eight months ago, that is, to a, uh, a lieutenant in the United States Navy. Uh, she's stationed in uh, uh, Okinawa. Well, Mr. Hicks 
uh, wanted to visit his wife, and he traveled by car from Gulfport to uh, to his in-laws' residence in San Francisco, and took a military flight, being a dependent of a of a military uh, mil active military. Uh, uh, active service member took a military flight from San Francisco and uh, to uh, from San Francisco to Okinawa, where is again where his wife is stationed. The uh, flight went off as scheduled. He boarded normally in San Francisco, and uh, the uh, uh, this flight was scheduled to to stop in Hawaii for refueling. The flight landed in Hawaii as scheduled, and what happened next was. Uh, it was rather interesting. He, he got off the, the plane, and, and again, I, I should remind everyone that that he was screened as a normal passenger would be screened. Went through the TSA DHS uh, screening process in San Francisco. The uh, uh, he then flew, or uh, uh, then of course boarded the military air aircraft, which landed in Hawaii. After uh, some maintenance and, uh, and a refueling in Hawaii. The passengers of that plane were called back to the plane. The uh, Mr. Wade or Mr. Uh, Hicks uh, returned to the plane, got on the plane as normal, having already gone through the screening process. And uh, it was at that time when uh, a couple of people showed up on the plane and escorted him off. They were they were military police, and uh, they took him to a small room within the airport and said that he was on the no-fly list. He was maintained in a small room under heavy armed guard. And, um, uh, of course, this concerned or, or this confused Mr. Hicks as well as the other uh, individuals, uh, uh, as, it was as well as the other officials there, because they wondered how he got on the uh, aircraft in the first place. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mr. Hicks was wondering why, what he did to get on or yeah, what he did for the distinction of getting on the uh, no-fly list. Well, now they had they had vetted him uh, in quite a number of other ways as well, right? I mean, he he's got a. Uh, uh, when I looked at his video that's on YouTube, they said that he has a TSA TWIC card, I think it is, which is a, you know, he's vetted as a, by the TSA themselves as a worker. Well, Some not only kind of that, he, not only that, he he, um, he underwent a uh, background check in Mississippi for a uh, concealed carry permit. Mm -hmm. In fact, an enhanced uh, per, uh, concealed carry permit for a weapon. Uh, and he held uh, classified clearances as a defense contractor for the military. So, no man, convictions, no charges against him. Right? No, no, not at all. So yesterday, uh, I received a phone call and and. Uh, from a uh, 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 from John Weber from uh, Braveheart Radio saying, "Hey, my friend is stuck in Hawaii, and you won't believe the story." And, and Mr. Weber uh, proceeded to inform me of the the situation. And I thought, you know, there's got to be something more here. There's got to be an issue with respect to uh, uh, perhaps something in his background or something recent. So, a as an investigator, I have access to proprietary da databases. Well, uh, to be clear and to be sure that there was nothing wrong with Mr. Hicks, or nothing showing his background. I, I ran, uh, and with his permission, I ran a, uh, a background check, and I didn't find any active wants, warrants. There's no felony or misdemeanor con convictions in his background. Uh, he's clean, and it, it, perfectly clean. So as we got to talking, um, I, I asked whether I asked him to appear on our radio show last night, which is the Hagman and Hagman Report. He did, and for 38 minutes, he narrated this this tale of of uh, duress, you know, where he was taken off, being held for four and a half, five hours in a small room in the airport by armed guards, while they attempted to find out why he was on this no fly list and how he got on this military aircraft. Because again, th this man is clean. And it's an insane situation, and what is what happens in this country when we have no due process anymore. It, it, you know, yeah, exactly. You can just be declared an enemy of the state by somebody, or you know, like in the movie Brazil, you know, a fly can drop in a in a typewriter and they get the wrong name, and all of a sudden you're whisked off and you disappear. We, well, well, you know, that was a thing too. I, I asked him I, uh, during the pre-interview and during my discussion with him. I asked him, look, could, could you have been uh, mistaken for another? person with the same surname or anything like that, or because he's got a junior distinction, perhaps, you know, the father. And what he told me, he said that the uh, uh, 
the DHS agents or the the uh, people who were acting on behalf of the TSA in DHS had narr- told him his social security number, his date of birth, his name, and, and they said, no, there is no mistake. This is you. You're on this no-fly list. So it's not a case of mistaken identity. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, that's scary. That's yeah, scary. exactly. So uh, to be honest with you, uh, the only thing that I could pa- I, fi- I, I could find in his background were a couple of YouTube videos, one in which he was reading um, uh, the, the Constitution in front of City Hall uh, during, a, a tea, I believe it was a Tea Party rally. Mm-hmm. Certainly nothing objectionable. Mm-hmm. I could find no, nothing in terms of social networking, uh, no postings on any open source internet forum, nothing that would classify him as a risk to the security of, of this nation overtly. Now, well, Homeland Security has said that people who prepare for disasters and people who hold uh, patriot views are enemies of the state, essentially. And so now we're starting to see this come to fruition, you know, in, in, uh, in both Brandon Robb's case and now again in this other case. And, and you know, since, uh, since I had published the story at Canada Free Press um, and, and on our website as well, and, and since you picked, it, you picked this up, I've received emails from uh, several people who have given me almost the same type of, uh, uh, of situation, the, 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 stating that, hey, I was uh, taken off a flight and they told me I was on the no-fly list, or I was prevented from getting onto a flight because I was on the no-fly list. I've got nothing in my background, according to these individuals. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't vet those individuals, but these circumstances are very similar to what happened to Mr. Hicks. So it looks like there's something going on here. It looks like, you know, perhaps, you know, there's something taking place right now that uh, something being activated, perhaps. I don't I don't know, mm-hmm. but it certainly is not. Well, uh, e- even if they don't admit to it being a mistake, I mean, it, it, there have been mistakes. They, they're they human like anybody else. They do make mistakes. They've put uh, young children on no-fly lists. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it, it's something like this, but... I, I think the thing that needs to concern every American is the fact that there is no due process. Uh, you know, it, it was fundamental to our Constitution that if the government thinks that you're guilty of something, they charge you with a crime. Uh, right. They don't just pick you up and take you to a mental institution or tell you you're confined to an island <laughs> and you can't fly out. Uh, you know, they, they have to tell you why they're detaining or arresting you and they have to you know let you see who your accusers are otherwise we're back to star chambers uh th- this is exactly. something that is fundamental a fundamental protection for citizens that the government is just ignoring and and wholesale here well it, exactly and the the really big issue i've got is the fact that this is interstate travel this is not traveling outside of the country and by the way he mm-hmm. has a, a legitimate valid passport uh, it has not been revoked. So one would think, you know, hey, if, if, if there was an issue, it should have been decided long ago. And uh, despite the fact that he's in a tropical paradise, you know, what better place to get stuck in Hawaii? I mean, think about the, uh, you know, put yourself in, in, in that gentleman's place with really traveling light, limited funds, and he's stuck there. Yeah. And he's, yeah. you know, what yeah. do you do? He actually has a, a, he's taking a picture, a cell phone video that he put up, and he's, traveling basically with just a backpack. Exactly. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't expecting to be staying there. Yeah, yeah uh, listening to his video, I mean, he's had security clearance, he's been a merchant uh, a marine, um, he's been a civilian contractor with the Navy, like you said, he's, he's had a concealed carry card with enhanced uh, uh, privileges, he's had the TSA vet him and give him a worker's card. I mean, he's a known person, I mean, they, they, you know, he's a citizen, he doesn't have a criminal background, it's just amazing that they can do this to somebody. I, I look. I was still looking even today. I was still looking for something that would in his background that could possibly explain this. Again, kind of adhering to the normalcy bias, thinking, oh, you know, the government knowing that they're incompetent, trying to believe that perhaps incompetent as opposed to something nefarious reigns here. But mm-hmm. I got to tell you, uh, it doesn't appear that way. I have not been able to get anyone from the Department of Homeland Security or the, or the TSA uh, to, to respond to my to my inquiries. Whether it's in in D.C. or in Hawaii, uh, it's just not. No one's talking about this. So that's I find amazing. That well, well, we we want to talk to Wade and see if there's been any developments today. Thank you so much for bringing this to our attention, and maybe if we can, maybe we can get them to respond if we make this public. That would be great. Yes. Thank you. 
Thank you, That's sir. That's Douglas Hagman, director of the Northeast Intelligence Network. He's the one who brought this case up to us. We also have on the line right now the person this is happening to, Wade Hicks, Jr., uh, the man who is stuck in Hawaii, uh, halfway between the U.S. and Japan, where his wife is, and who is now stuck on a no-fly list. Uh, Wade, how are you doing? Uh, well, I'm doing fairly good, considering. It's a strange, this is a very strange case. We just got finished talking to uh, Doug Hagman, and uh, it's hard to believe that our government could do this, uh, just label somebody as an enemy of the state without notifying them that uh, they've been put on some secret list, and then strand people. Indeed, I, it's, a, it's a scary feeling. I guess one of the questions that comes up is, uh, you know, you were allowed to fly out of uh, San Francisco to Hawaii, and uh, you were on the ground for quite a while even. Uh, you would have had to apply in advance to uh, travel uh, on a military plane, and uh, nothing ever came up about this as you were waiting for your tickets. Nothing came up while you were uh, taking your time leaving and, and on the ground for five hours. And uh, yet, when you get to Hawaii, they pull you off with armed guards and tell you that you're not allowed to fly either home or forward to meet your wife in Japan. Is that correct? That, that's correct. I mean, it, it started out like something fairly routine when I, when I got asked to come back into the terminal from the secure area. Um, I went over to the U.S. Customs and Immigration's office. The lights were off. The doors were locked. Nobody was there. So I was invited back to the uh, airman's break room for the uh, Air Mobility Command's uh, terminal for uh, space available. So I actually went behind the desk into a secure area, area of the facility, and I sat on the couch waiting to hear something. Uh, about 15, 20 minutes later, um, two uh, heavily armed Air Force security forces guys showed up. Uh, one of them had an M4. The other one was carrying an M4 with a 203 grenade launcher attached and a 50 cal ammo can with probably 20, 30 rounds of uh, 40 millimeter grenades. Now, just to be um, clear, this is this is a military base, which is why it's uh, soldiers it's coming. Forces. Right. We haven't gotten that far down the police state yet, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe we have. Um, now, not only did they miss your your uh, the fact that you were on a no-fly list uh, heading out that you had not been notified of, but you've been vetted significantly even by the TSA. You have a uh, TWIC card, a TWIC card. Could you explain to us what that is and what's involved in that process? Uh, the TWIC card is a transportation worker identification credential. Um, it's not something that just anyone can get. You have to be either a commercial truck driver that's carrying hazardous materials or you have to be someone that requires access to secured facilities such as nuclear power plants, ports, um, or work on vessels in merchant marine, as was my case for getting the TWIC card. Ah, so you've had that. You've had secret clearance. You've just uh -huh. uh, recently gotten a, a, a carry, a firearms carry permit that is an enhanced carry, you said, right? Yes, that's right. Um, in order to get a firearms permit in, in the state of Mississippi, you have to go to the Department of Public Safety and you have to get your fingerprints done. And then they, in turn, send your fingerprints to the Federal Bureau of Investigation to check and see if you have any criminal history, any outstanding warrants, you're under any type of investigations. They do a very thorough background check. And then if nothing comes back, they are supposed to issue the permit within 45 days. I applied for my permit on August 17, 2012, received my permit approximately around September 22, 2012. So it was well within the 45-day window. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing slowed down that process. Okay, so to recap, you've been vetted by the TSA. You've been vetted by the FBI. And nobody, and, there, and you have no criminal record. Uh, and yet, somehow, you're on the no-fly list. And they have you stranded in Hawaii. You can't go forward or back. Um, now, you have been involved with uh, Mississippi uh, uh, Preppers Organization. Is that correct? Can you tell yeah, us a little bit about that? Prepared this project. Mm -hmm. Do you think that perhaps that had anything to do with you being detained? God, we've, if it does, uh, that's a pretty, pretty sad situation. It is a pretty sad situation, but we've seen uh, Department of Homeland Security documents that say that 
people who are preppers and people who are patriots and uh, who are outspoken about politics are basically enemies of the state. I, I wonder if we're seeing something about that. Did you notice anything? I mean, is is there any reason at all that you would you would think that that would be uh, uh, set apart? Um, I don't know, but there was an interesting situation that I had um, earlier this year. Uh, we had a member that joined the website, and I was hosting a meet and greet at my house to meet current members and former members that I haven't had a face-to-face -face, uh, conversation with. And uh, one of the guys that came over there, he was he was disabled. He uh, drove a vehicle that had an Afghanistan veteran's plate on it. Uh, he identified himself as a Navy combat veteran, mm -hmm. uh, a chief petty officer, retired. Um, he started telling me details about how he was in SEAL Team 2 um, and worked with the SEALs for years and stuff like that. But the things were not adding up with the guy's um, story because I've, I've been around and I've talked to people in the special operations community through either mutual friends or chance meetings through jobs that I've had. Mm -hmm. And this guy did not present himself like the caliber of those people because they're they're mentally tough, mentally strong, and they don't talk about that they're SEALs. You will never hear a SEAL say, oh, I was a SEAL. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that immediately struck me as odd. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a casual conversation with him, nodded my head. Um, my wife and I had a dinner engagement, and he stayed all the way to the end. Eventually, we said, hey, look, you got to go. We're leaving. Um, and we parted ways. So I immediately... When I got back the next day, I talked to my wife about it, who's active duty Navy, and I said, something doesn't seem right. I'm going to go uh, contact special operations people in Coronado, California, and see if I can run a Freedom of Information Act request on this guy to vet him and see if he was indeed a SEAL. Mm -hmm. um, very quick process, got the FOIA request back, and I can share that with you if you'd like. Um, but the guy was not a Navy SEAL. Um, I had a friend of mine that's uh, in the military, military police unit, he ran a background check on him just to see if he was ever in the military. Hmm. Was never in the military. Really? Yet this guy had a, a Mississippi concealed carry permit, a authentic, from what I can tell, retired military ID. He even showed me his DD-214 that showed he had SEAL time on it. Wow. Uh, wow. So, Boy, that's suspicious. Man. I just reached, I, I, I made the assumption that this guy, okay, I know he's not a SEAL. I know he's never been in the military. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. It just so happened to be I was out driving around one day, and I saw his vehicle pass. Mm -hmm. And I said, huh, well, I'm going the same way as him, just kind of curious to see where he goes. And lo and behold, he pulls into the uh, federal court building down in Gulfport, pulls in around the back, and there's a Department of Homeland Security office there, and he pulls into the parking lot and parks in the handicap spot. Really? And I just kept driving down the road. I said, huh, imagine that. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's that's amazing information. Well, he sent to me a few days before saying, look, you know, you showed him to one of our vets. You were careless with a firearm. He actually tried to hand the, a bag that it's alleged that he had a firearm because I never searched his bag. He handed my bag off to my wife, and uh, I said, you know, that wasn't cool. You know, you need to get your bag or whatever. And then he hands his bag off to someone who's active duty Air Force EOD. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, he's like, I'm not holding your bag. You'd hold your own bag. Mm -hmm. So after that incident, you know, we said, hey, you know, we're going to kick you off the website and don't contact us anymore because you're, you know, you're scaring us. Wow. So uh, that happened several months ago. Wow. Um, if there's anything that I could think of that would put me on the no-fly list, I guess I upset somebody at DHS because... Well, that certainly is... That's supposed to be some kind of a cheating or informant. He did a very poor job. Yeah, that certainly is suspicious. Wow. Well, in, in terms of, can... yeah, I'd, I, we'd like to follow into that a little bit, a uh, little bit more. But now, in terms of your immediate situation, um, you've contacted your senator and your congressman. Uh, I believe you said you've also contacted uh, Rand Paul. Um, and what have you heard back from them? You can't get anything from. Uh, uh, immigration, you can't get anything from uh, uh, Homeland Security or, or TSA, so what have you heard from your uh, congressman? Uh, I haven't heard anything from my congressman's office. Um, they need a public uh, information release form, which I, I have to get up back over to the library in Hickam and print it out and fax it to them, but I was able to fax one to my senator, uh, Roger Wicker's office, yesterday, 
and they're they're working on the process today. I received a call from them this morning. Um, Senator Rand Paul's office contacted me yesterday and said that they would like to help me, but I'm not a Mississippi resident, so uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a Kentucky resident. I see. Hmm. Well, so I hope they, that... Uh, they can do to help, they would. Wow. Well, we're going to continue to follow your story. Please let us know what's uh, going on with it. Um, at, at, on the bright side, at least you're in Hawaii. Uh, you're not confined to a mental institution like they did Brandon Robb, but uh, it's really, really frightening for all of our viewers to see that uh, the government can act this way without any accountability. And it's also interesting to see what's going on with this, uh, this person who was not a Navy SEAL but pretending to be one. Well, thank you very much, Wade. Uh, we'll be talking to you again. Well, that's very disturbing news. Uh, please spread this story wide. We need to find out what's going on. We need to find out why he's being held. And uh, also, it would be interesting to find out what's going on with the uh, background uh, snooping that was going on, apparently, by the DHS. We'll be right back. controls the past, controls the future. Who controls the present, controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you gotta do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power, humanity has the power, we have the power. Do you wanna fight? You better believe! Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death! MoneyBomb.com. We just expanded next door. We're coming for the New World Order. Ah! Yeah, it's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. 48 hours to change the world. Here's freedom. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com to read our mission and to see the amazing roster of guests we've got lined up sharing their insights on liberty and resistance to tyranny. I got involved in radio and TV as well as filmmaking 17 years ago because I didn't like the direction I saw our country and our world going in. The attacks on basic freedoms like the Second Amendment, the move towards collectivism in the nanny state. And over the last decade and a half, Infowars.com and my radio show and the films have become really part of the core resistance to tyranny worldwide. It seems like yesterday, but it was more than five years ago, that I was sitting in my small office of about 3,000 square feet and realized that we were already reaching millions of people a week and that we had a responsibility to expand our operations in the face of the globalist. It was listeners five years ago that demanded we have a money bomb and expand our operations. We've gone from less than 10 crew members to more than 50 today. Five years ago, I was reaching about 3 million people a week. Now it's 15 million a week conservatively. Imagine what will happen if you just tell one person a day about InfoWars.com or our news reports that are online. Imagine what will happen if you donate just 5 or $10 to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and allow us to go to the next level and put the nightly news out on free-to-air satellite worldwide. No, that one action won't save the world, but it will trigger brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere that will bring down the globalist and restore humanity on the right path of justice and liberty and a level playing field. We have a choice, the globalist dark age of control freak technocracy or 1776 worldwide. This October 18th and 19th, from Thursday morning right through into Saturday morning, it's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. 48 hours to change the world. I'll see you live with the free video and audio streams emanating from PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. 
I'm Alex Jones, defending liberty, resisting tyranny. Welcome back. Our next guest is Ronnie Cummings. He's a uh, director, national director of the Organic Consumers Association. Mr. Cummings has been a longtime activist for clean, natural, organic food. Uh, for 15 years, he's headed this organization, and uh, they're pushing for strict organic standards. Mr. Cummings, uh, you're in Mexico right now, is that correct? Yes, the Organic Consumers Association has a affiliated uh, network in Mexico called Via Organica, which translates to the organic way. And we're very much involved here south of the border in fighting against Monsanto and genetically engineered foods and promoting the growing organic movement in Mexico. Great. Now, there's a fight going on in California as well, right? Proposition 37. Tell us a little bit about how that's going. Yes. Uh, I mean, after many years of trying to get the federal government or the food and Drug Administration to listen to the public, 90% of whom want mandatory labeling of genetically engineered foods. Uh, a group of activists about a year and a half ago decided that let's forget about the federal government for now and let's use the uh, California ballot initiative avenue in order to try to legislate uh, laws directly. So what Proposition 37 is, is a citizen-powered ballot initiative that California voters will vote on November 6. This law will require the mandatory labeling of genetically engineered foods and genetically engineered food ingredients, and it will also ban the routine industry practice of marketing or labeling uh, so-called natural foods uh, that contain genetically engineered ingredients. Yeah, that, that's very important, I think, isn't it? You know, a lot of people are concerned about pesticides on the outside of their food, but, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that what they're getting is pesticides that have been genetically engineered system, systemically throughout the food. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, the polling we've done in California and other places, approximately 40% of Americans feel that these genetically engineered foods are dangerous. Another 40% aren't sure whether they're dangerous or not. But one thing we all have in common is we want uh, the ability to know what's in our food. We want to be able to choose whether to eat genetically engineered foods or not. Uh, right now, the only way you can be sure to avoid genetically engineered foods is to buy organic foods. Uh, but these are not always available to people, which is the reason why we need mandatory labeling, just like 61 other countries in the world already have including the European Union and Japan and China and India, Brazil, many others. That's true. But I mean, even even at places like uh, Whole Foods, uh, they admit that a lot of their food is genetically uh, modified. And yet, you know, their slogan is uh, always natural. Right. So, I mean, without any labeling, you really don't know what you're eating. You sure don't. I mean, in the United States today, uh, we're buying about thirty two billion dollars worth of uh, certified organic foods, that's, uh, you know, four or five percent of all grocery store sales. But consumers are also purchasing an even larger amount, $50 million worth of so-called natural or all natural food and products. And when you look more closely, you find that uh, there is nothing uh, regulating the use of the word natural. In other words, it's a hype, it's greenwashing. Mm -hmm. So even in these natural food stores like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and in the natural section of conventional supermarkets, whether you're talking about HEB or, or Safeway or, or Publix, uh, a lot of the stuff out there that bears the natural label 
uh, is not natural at all. It was produced with genetically engineered seeds, uh, pesticides were used, chemical fertilizers, so on and so forth. So our message uh, is beware of natural. Uh, and if you want something really natural, look for organic. And that's the reason why we wrote into the ballot initiative in California, Proposition 37, that it will be against the law after November 6 in California to call something natural or all natural, unless it really is. You know, I, I would think that uh, a chain like Whole Foods would be interested in, um, they, they would want to remove any question or any cloud as to whether their, their uh, food that they're selling is, is first quality or you know, totally organic. I would think that they would want to hop in with both feet on this initiative, but their support's been kind of lukewarm so far, hasn't it? It has. It's taken a tremendous amount of pressure coming from public interest organizations such as Organic Consumers Association, uh, our networks like Natural News or Mercola or Cornucopia Institute uh, and Alex Jones' network to uh, force Whole Foods to, first of all, they finally endorsed proposition in California saying they support it. But now, uh, the last few weeks, the pressure has been, uh, it's not enough to just endorse, you're a multi-billion dollar company. How about putting some serious resources into supporting Prop 37? So, and that's a real important issue, isn't it? Because, I mean, you're really, uh, you know, the, the, there's a lot of money on the other side that's coming. How, how is that kind of stacking up in terms of the for and against uh, advertising funding? Yes, I mean, what's happened is that the, the people trying to deny us the right to know whether our food is genetically engineered or not, that is the biotechnology companies, the big multinational food corporations, the big supermarket chains, uh, they have raised over $40 million so far, which is quite mm -hmm. a bit for a state ballot initiative, uh, in order to put a barrage of misleading and outright uh, lying ads on television, telling people that, oh, uh, if you vote yes on Prop 37, it's going to raise your grocery bills. It's going to create uh, a, a vast bureaucracy in the state of California. It's going to hurt uh, California family farmers. It's going to hurt uh, small grocery stores and so on and so forth. Our side, the side pushing for yes, on Proposition 13 uh, has managed to raise about $6 million so far. So we're, we're being outspent uh, almost seven to one, uh, and this has had an impact. Uh, the latest poll we did, we're still ahead in California, but we're only ahead by eight points, 48 wow. to 40. And we were ahead by, uh, you know, 30 points uh, a month ago. So we're uh, making sure that we raise every dime we can. And we're also countering the power of this vast budget that Monsanto and the big agriculture have and big supermarkets. We have uh, 10,000 volunteers out in the field in California who are leafleting every day out in front of grocery stores. We're tabling at county fairs and events and campuses and so on. We also have volunteers now uh, organizing themselves into these phone banks, calling registered voters in California. Uh, we've been able to put up uh, quite a few ads on the radio. Uh, we're the dominant voice, of course, on the internet and the social media, mm -hmm. uh, but we're uh, building up our war chest so that we can at least, uh, in the last two weeks of the campaign, get out a lot of television ads to counter the lies that are out there. Uh, well, let's, 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 we're going to win, but we can't win without a certain amount of money and without a vast number of volunteers helping us. Mm -hmm. it, it certainly would make sense, it seems to me, for Whole Foods if they want to maintain consumer confidence that they are getting true, whole, natural foods that they would want to uh, jump in with this. I can't understand either how they could argue, how the other side could argue that this is going to increase food costs. I mean, there's labels with extensive uh, ingredients on there right now on all the foods that people buy. How, well, what is their argument for that? How do they try, do they, do they try to support that or do they just make an assertion? They're just making that assertion because they know 
that uh, most Americans are financially stressed these days and that the cost of food is a major factor uh, in our household budgets. So they're trying to say that this is going to raise the cost of your food uh, hundreds of dollars a year. Uh, and, you know, they have no basis for saying this because the bottom line is that if a company uh, like Kellogg's, for example, uh, wants to admit that there's genetically engineered corn in their Kellogg's corn flakes or in their Kashi so-called natural cereal, uh, all they have to do is the next time they uh, print labels on these cereal boxes, they add a few words saying it was produced uh, using genetic engineering. Uh, yeah, the yeah. cost of this ink, of course, is negligible. <laughs> I mean, what they're really talking about in industry uh, is that they, they want to keep concealing from us the fact that these subsidized taxpayer subsidized genetically engineered crops, corn, soybeans, corn, sugar beets, canola, uh, and so on, uh, you know, reduce their costs, their input costs a little bit. Yeah. But the bottom line is that the public wants a choice. Uh, if you look at the European Union, for example, which is the largest agricultural market uh, in the world, uh, when they required genetically engineered foods to be labeled uh, over a decade ago, it did not cause a rise in food prices. What it does cause is consumers to pay attention to labels and for them to voice their concerns to their grocery stores and to the manufacturers uh, if they're utilizing a technology, in this case, genetic engineering, that has not been properly safety tested uh, and is not properly regulated. That's right. It's not going to raise their costs. What it might do is it might lower some of their profits temporarily until they start providing people what the people really want. That's correct. Um, exactly. Well, I, I certainly uh, wish you the best, and we're going to continue to cover this, uh, uh, keep us informed as to how things are going. And uh, we're all, everybody, even though we're here in Texas, this is something that affects the entire nation. So hopefully uh, people all over the nation will pay attention and not just large corporations like uh, Whole Foods, but maybe uh, individuals will send some money to support this because it's something we're all into. We appreciate right. it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Good night. Well, that's it for the nightly news. I'm David Knight. Don't forget that our money bomb is in just two days. We're going to have a 48-hour money bomb, but you can start donating now. And you're not going to find the mainstream news talking about issues like someone being put on a no-fly list and stranded in a uh, away from home, that's not the kind of stories that they cover. But InfoWars does. We'll see you back here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. All you got to do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. We have the power. Do you want to fight? You better believe you got one. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories.
bomb. We just expanded next door. We're coming for the New World Order. Ah! Yeah! It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. 48 hours to change the world. Here's freedom. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com to read our mission and to see the amazing roster of guests we've got lined up sharing their insights on liberty and resistance to tyranny. I got involved in radio and TV as well as filmmaking 17 years ago because I didn't like the direction I saw our country and our world going in. The attacks on basic freedoms like the Second Amendment, the move towards collectivism in the nanny state. And over the last decade and a half, Infowars.com and my radio show and the films have become really part of the core resistance to tyranny worldwide. It seems like yesterday, but it was more than five years ago that I was sitting in my small office of about 3,000 square feet and realized that we were already reaching millions of people a week and that we had a responsibility to expand our operations in the face of the globalist. It was listeners five years ago that demanded we have a money bomb and expand our operations. We've gone from less than 10 crew members to more than 50 today. Five years ago, I was reaching about 3 million people a week. Now it's 15 million a week conservatively. Imagine what will happen if you just tell one person a day about InfoWars.com or our news reports that are online. Imagine what will happen if you donate just 5 or $10 to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and allow us to go to the next level and put the nightly news out on free-to-air satellite worldwide. No, that one action won't save the world, but it will trigger brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere that will bring down the globalist and restore humanity on the right path of justice and liberty and a level playing field. We have a choice, the globalist dark age of control freak technocracy or 1776 worldwide. This October 18th and 19th, from Thursday morning right through into Saturday morning, it's InfoWars Money Bomb 2012. 48 hours to change the world. I'll see you live with the free video and audio streams emanating from PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. I'm Alex Jones, defending liberty, resisting tyranny.